okay. Something happened. And let me tell you about it. Uh, the RV and the truck are wrecked. We got in a pretty bad car crash. This was at the end of our trip coming back from Louisiana, um, which was one of our final stops. And I guess I'll tell you about how awesome and amazing the trip was. I was able to test out the studio and it worked like a dream. It was amazing. And I'll show you everything up to that point. And then I'll talk about what happened with the crash and we'll approach that subject. So let's go. So in this video, we'll focus a little bit more on the trip and the studio, and then later I'll do a very in-depth full studio setup video so you guys can see more of the details of what that looks like. This is, as you know, the trailer. We were trying to figure out how the flow of the morning was gonna work, how we're gonna set up the bed, where we're gonna put our stuff to make it easily accessible. One of our first stops was in Lafayette, Louisiana at this beautiful KOA and um, because we didn't wanna make the drive all at once. One of the studio panels had fallen off while we were driving because of the bungee cord, so we decided to replace them with zip ties. All right, so this solution is already working so much easier. You can see the zip ties in there, and what I'm gonna do is go ahead and tighten them on these and then put up this middle one, otherwise I won't be able to reach them. So it took a minute to kind of squeeze our hands in there and tighten them, but honestly, I like this solution so much better than the bungee cords. So here is a quick RV update. Our toilet broke. It wasn't like the hole wasn't opening for the toilet to flush, so we went to see what was the problem, and that little white thing down there had broken off. So we found an RV camper world that we're gonna go to in the morning and buy a brand new toilet. We are already in Florida at this point, and it was about an hour drive to get to the closest um, store that sells RV parts. We looked it up online and made sure that they had the exact toilet at the exact price that we were looking for. But this is something pretty common. Whenever people who are traveling in RVs are on the road and something breaks, the question is, what are you going to do? And there's actually quite a few options. <laughs> you tend to have, um, you know, something nearby within an hour or so, hopefully, from where you are that can sell you replacement parts at a premium rate, might I add, or there are actually other um, RV trailer camper companies that try their best to ship you products while you're on the road. So it's like they coordinate with you of where you're going to be and when and at what place you can pick things up because they understand the challenges that you're facing when you're on the move. So here we are headed to my aunt's condo. She lives in Destin, Florida, so we were out there visiting her. This is their little private beach spot for their condo. Um, it was so beautiful, so relaxing. The sand was gorgeous. And then this is at the RV park. We stayed at the uh, RV State Park, which is half a mile walk from the beach. And I had never seen a beach like this. I always see beaches with high rises and condos behind you. And it was such a, an unexpected experience to walk out and see what a natural beach looks like, which I guess I shouldn't be surprised, but I don't go to the beach very often. We saw a dolphin out on the water. This is our spot at the RV park. It was so cozy. The whole um, RV site was just really nice. You felt kind of protected and in a private spot with all of the trees. Everything was easily walkable and really well maintained. It was just amazing. So staying in the RV park was really affordable. I think for four nights we paid less than $400. It might have been like $326, something like that. And we had water and electric hookup. Everything in our RV we had access to, you know, our shower, our toilet after we got it fixed, all of that. We had everything that we needed. So it was so much more affordable because Destin is a pretty expensive place to be and you can't just bring your dogs into any condo. 
Good morning, everyone. So today we are leaving our campsite here in Florida, and we are headed over to New Orleans on our way back to Austin. So I'm really pleased with how the studio and the RV has worked out. Um, I have a client that told me they have a rush on an important project, so I told them I can go ahead and get them to that this week, even though I'm, you know, technically giving myself some vacation time. And then I had another client reach out and tell me that they needed something by tomorrow, so um, I'm more than happy to record that for them, and I'll be able to test out my sound in another RV space whenever this evening, whenever I sit down to record a project for them. So I'm going to go ahead and knock this out and then I can show you what it looks like when we pack up the whole RV and get ready for the road. We have shelves and things which are nice whenever we're parked and we're going to be somewhere for a couple days. But just because we, you know, don't know how much things move around and we want to get used to driving this RV around in general, we packed everything away into secure spots. Especially with my studio, I didn't want to take any chances. Um, it's very expensive equipment and you never know how much you're going to move around. And obviously, since you know that we rolled, um, I'm really really happy that we did such a solid job of packing everything away. So some of the considerations are when you're on the road, let's say that you're on really bumpy road, things are going to get jostled around. You know, we had a chair that was kind of sitting out every single time we were on the road, it would slide across the trailer. Things just slide around much more easily um, in ways that you don't always expect. So we always laid down that back chair. Any expensive equipment I put away into boxes and tried to stuff it into a cubby so it wouldn't run the risk of getting smashed, falling over on anything, spilling anything. I tried uh, my best to really make everything nice and tidy and locked away. Whenever we were packing things away, one of our considerations was weight distribution. You don't want to have one side of the trailer carrying more weight than the other because what if you were to get off balance, it's much more difficult to regain that balance when things aren't balanced to begin with. Like the desk, we would push up to the front of the trailer so it's closer to that hitch because that desk was kind of weighty and we didn't want it to be, you know, in the very caboose of the trailer, you know, I guess like throwing its weight around. We wanted it to be closer to that hitch joint. Obviously, um, <laughs> it didn't keep us from rolling, but I'm very comfortable that it wasn't an imbalance in the weight distribution that made us roll. We actually liked having these up most of the time because we were either changing or taking a shower or doing something. So this is definitely going to be a priority. How I want to make these window covers look nice instead of like some trashy foil. Uh, so I'm thinking maybe something magnetic that I can fold out. I just am never a fan of the curtains or the shades that I've seen people use. In the bed, you know that I already wasn't a super fan of the bed, but we had a little hitch with it. So on this side, we couldn't find a stud to anchor it into the wall. So it pulled out during this trip. Um, the gas struts always have that constant pressure. So it was almost pulling itself off of the wall because of that gas strut. So we had to undo the gas strut, which makes it difficult to lift the bed again. But I'm not too upset about it because I wasn't a big fan. It looks, you know, a little DIY and these face plates aren't wanting to stay on. You can see this one over here was starting to come off. So I'm going to rework the bed plan, but the part that I did like was the slats that pulled out was so sturdy for the both of us. It never felt precariously balanced or like we were going to break anything. So that was really nice. What else? When we're driving, these uh, like types of I don't know what you would call that, like clamps for the cabinet. They're not really meant for RVs and the previous owners had the same issue. So they kind of fall open and sometimes whenever we come back here to check while we're driving, little things have fallen out. But other than that, it's not a big deal. What else? I guess finally, one thing that I did notice, I was recording this morning for a quick um, project and I started to hear a whirring sound and I started walking around and the whirring sound was coming from the fuse box 
and I was wondering if I was pulling too much power so I turned off the bathroom light and it got quieter I turned off a light over here and it got quieter I turned off the kitchen light and then it stopped whirring completely so that's something that I want to keep in mind whenever I'm recording how much power we're pulling and how I want to deal with that issue other than that we're gonna finish uh, packing up and then we'll hit the road Okay, so I usually packed up the inside while my husband Chris dealed with, you know, draining the plumbing and all of that stuff. And then I would help lift up the legs and we had our process down pretty quickly. Um, and honestly, I'm really happy with our whole packing up process. It was nice, smooth. We each knew exactly what we needed to do. These are sway bars that are meant to keep the trailer more balanced when you're on the road so it doesn't sway around as much. And now we are on the road headed out of Destin, Florida and headed to New Orleans. This is our first stop in New Orleans. It was such a cool little restaurant in the French Quarter. Um, I just loved New Orleans so much. The history there, the, you know, vibe of it, the live music. I just loved everything about the French Quarter. Surprisingly, this was actually my favorite part of the entire trip. The beignets, the music, the food, everything. I don't know how many of you guys know, but New Orleans is, I think, the murder capital of the United States right now. So it's not a safe city. And we were kind of curious as to what the RV park would look like. We went with an expensive RV park. It was 125 a night. So the RV park had a big wall, a gated entrance with a code. It was really nicely um, maintained and had such a New Orleans French Quarter vibe to it with gaslight lamps at your RV spots and all of that stuff. And it was so easily walkable to the French Quarter that we didn't have to worry about trying to take our truck into the French Quarter and finding a place to park. So that was really nice. One of the things that I didn't expect or think about even was where the RV park was located. And it was literally right next to a highway. And it got me thinking that if I'm in an area where there's going to be a lot of noise that I don't have any control over, I can soundproof until the cows come home inside the trailer, but there's a very specific way to mitigate sound from outside coming in. And that's something that I think I'll work on in the next build, but um, the only solution that I had in my head at the time was there might be times where I need to wake up at 4 a.m. when nobody else is awake and do all of my recording for the day. And then around 7 when everyone's waking up, I'm done with my whole work day and I have the whole day free and I don't have to worry about that noise getting in the way. The only other consideration of that that I hadn't fully um, solved yet was if I was to do a live recorded session with the client and they want a normal work hour for the session, how might I handle something like that? And yeah, so that was, you know, those were some of the things that were on my mind that I was trying to troubleshoot. Along with that, it was just so much fun. One of the things that I was really looking forward to with this trailer studio build is when I'm in a closet at home day in and day out and I'm constantly giving my emotion for all of these different voiceovers that I'm recording for, it can be very energetically draining because I don't have people talking back to me very often. I don't have people giving me energy during the project very often. If I'm doing a video game or animation audition, I, you know, half the time don't even have a reader that um, that can kind of bounce that story back and forth with. So it's all coming from within. And what I really loved about this trip is we can go out and explore a new city and a new space and go to the beach or go to New Orleans. And it's so inspiring and it gives you so much energy and excitement for life. And then you have that energy within you whenever you sit down to record it. And that was by far my favorite part, the most exciting part of this entire trip. I just loved it. So we would go into New Orleans and we would go to a really nice, like, traditional, traditional New Orleans brunch and the food was incredible. There was always live music around. Um, they're known for having these historical courtyards all within the French Quarter and it just feels like there's so much to explore and soak up and discover and it was a lot of fun. We also did a historical walking tour which was 
also so much fun. The tour guide was amazing and he was so passionate about his job and I just love to learn the history of a place like that. And New Orleans has such a colorful, interesting history from, you know, the 1700s and the 1800s with like the French and the Spanish and how the territory was getting settled to the voodoo history, to the music and the food, all of it. I can't gush about it enough. It was so cool. So even though we had this crash and I've never, I've never had a car accident before ever. Um, and it was scary and you know it was like we flipped the truck completely and you know hanging upside down and all of that stuff and this was the day that we left New Orleans even though we had that experience I'm really glad that we were able to experience the full week of the trip as opposed to crashing earlier in the trip because we know that the studio concept works it was exactly what we were looking for in terms of a lifestyle and we just we loved every second of it and I'm glad that we had that experience before having something so traumatizing and scary happen so I guess the takeaway from it is that we're going to try again we already I'll talk about it in my next video we already have a new truck when we're ready you know, distanced a little bit more from everything and we feel settled again and we feel grounded within ourselves again, then I think we'll definitely start looking for a new trailer. Other than the crash itself, we were so lucky that my husband was okay. I just kind of had a beat up eye. And, you know, other than that, it was, you know, everything worked in our favor. So we will try again. And of course, I will take you guys along for that journey again. And some of the positives of it are, you know, we get to have our redo sooner than we thought we would. So, um, so we'll be able to make some of the improvements, which I'll talk about in the next video, some of the things that we would change and will change in the next project and some of the decisions and considerations that now we know to have. And, uh, and I guess I'll see you guys next time. Bye.